As of a couple of days ago, there is a new entry in the kind of ongoing saga of the downfall of Destiny 2. Game director Joe Blackburn put out a fairly lengthy, candid video on his Twitter account where he talked about the recently very poorly received state of the game and the overall player sentiment towards Destiny 2 as we go into the final shape coming up as the last major expansion of the 10-ish year plan for the story of Destiny. I wanted to talk about this because while a lot of content creators and people in the community have seen this as kind of the saving grace that the game needs prior to the Final Shape Showcase that's coming up on the 22nd, I don't feel nearly as positively about this. Not because I dislike Joe or because I think he's trying to be intentionally disingenuous, but we've heard everything he's saying before, either from him or other members of the Destiny 2 team or other leadership on Destiny 2. And just because we hear it from the game director himself doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. So let's talk about some of the points here because I am not reassured by any of this. So I wanted to come in, talk to you all directly, and sort of give you an update on what we thought about the state of the game that we put out and what we think about Destiny as a whole. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Again, I know Destiny is not the focus of the content on my channel, but Destiny 2 is one of my favorite games, or I guess maybe was one of my favorite games, not so much anymore, to the point that my channel avatar is my guardian from Destiny 2. And it's interesting to discuss this for me because I want to see Destiny succeed, and I think it is doing anything but... So, I'm going to be showing clips from Joe's video that he did on Twitter. I won't show you the whole thing. It'll be linked in the description if you want to see it for yourself and you haven't already. But there's a few relevant parts that I want to call out here. And again, before we get started, I really, I don't dislike Joe. I don't think what he's doing here is bad or trying to be manipulative or false-faced or anything like that. I think Joe is a very passionate dude. I've always, always, always liked seeing what he has to say about Destiny just as a dev and then as the director of the game. I think he genuinely wants the game to be as good as it can be. And there are a couple things in this that kind of lend credence to that idea. But I think he's in a bad situation where there's only so much you can do when the money people at the top want certain things to happen or don't want certain things to happen. Even as the game director, I feel like he's probably in a very rock and a hard place kind of situation. But that said, this is not a personal attack on Joe. This is discussing the information he's putting out here and why I don't feel it's as reassuring as people would like it to be. There's a bunch of stuff in this video that we're not going to go over talking about like their disappointment in the state of the game article and like what the final shape showcase is going to be and all that type of stuff. I'm not worried about that. I just want to talk about the actual info that we have here. The first major point that Joe discusses is the issues with PvP and the Crucible. One of the things that was talked about in the State of the Game article that I discussed in my video about the State of the Game article is the fact that Bungie states that they are incapable of putting the resources into PvP to create enough new maps to satisfy the community on a yearly basis. And that's kind of a really funny statement and something that people in the gaming sphere at large have latched onto. Because when you're a company as big as Bungie, making first-person shooters with the legacy of things like Halo behind you, and you say that you don't have the resources to make more than one new map a year and reprise a couple of old maps that already exist and just need to be updated to the current game model, that paints a really bad picture <laughs> of what your company is capable of and the state of the team working on this game. What's interesting... And remember, this video is 100% direct reaction and damage control for the disastrously received State of the Game article that came out prior to it. We have now completely flipped course. Finally, we flip over to our agenda. Uh, we've been focused on making one new map and a few reprises a year. Now, all that aside, I think it's fair to say this approach is not producing the crucible that our players expect us. So what are we going to do? How are we going to change? First, let's talk about maps. It's clear that the sort of slow trickle of PvP maps isn't having the effect we want. And although it gets an injection of PvP maps every so often into the ecosystem, 
It's also forcing this like one new map a year it means you're trying to build a map that has to do everything, which means it can't be good at anything. So next year, we're gonna change our philosophy. Instead of a slow trickle of maps throughout the year, we're gonna focus our effort into a single map pack that's free for everyone. The implication here is that this is going to be a return to getting more maps in a year, more new maps in a year to refresh the crucible, give people new play spaces to work in where they'll need new strategies to succeed, all that type of stuff. However, potentially because this is a very knee jerk reaction to the state of the game, and they probably haven't had the chance to really hammer out a lot of the details yet, we don't know exactly how many maps that's going to be. Will they be all new maps? When you say a map pack, how many maps is that? two, three, four, I don't know. And the issue <laughs> is the fact that this is reactionary. Supposedly they don't have the resources to make this work. Then suddenly a couple weeks later, oh, we absolutely have the resources to make this work. We're going to be doing it next year. Interesting. Where did those resources come from? Why were they so unavailable to you before when they're so clearly available now? If they're so clearly available now, why has the game been strung along on so few resources up until the point where it seems like the entire thing is going to collapse because of negative community sentiment? Hmm? Interesting, right? It's almost like we're at the same point in the Destiny life cycle where because the community sentiment is so poor and because interest in the game is dropping fast from new players and long-standing players alike that, oh, suddenly... Bungie opens the floodgates and is allowed or chooses to or what have you put a lot more time and effort and money into the game to make it as good as they could actually be making it. Remember, you can't create patterns by over delivering, right? Until you literally need to deliver a baseline expected level of content, which I guess would be over delivering in their minds, in order to keep the game from dying. <laughs> and that's where we are now. We've seen this over the entire course of Destiny's lifespan. The first year of Destiny 1, when the game was kind of faltering, really struggling, people were very disappointed with the end game, with the rating situation, the overall seeming lack of content. Taken King comes out, boom, drops a ton of maps. Okay, look at that. Suddenly there's a lot of interest in the PvP side of things. There's new content. When there's less story stuff going on, people can jump into PvP, have a bunch of new stuff going on, and it keeps the game alive until more PvE content comes out. Cool. Destiny 2 comes out. Really rough first year. Curse of Osiris, Warmind, especially Curse of Osiris, nearly killed the game. Interesting. Suddenly, Forsaken comes out. Bunch of new maps. Really, really highly regarded was stated as a type of expansion that they will never be able to make again because it was an emergency action. Okay. Then we have a few years of poorly received expansions for Destiny, slowly dwindling support for PvP, interest is at an all-time low due to the poor reception of Lightfall, the State of the Game article that came after it. Suddenly... Guys, remember when we said we didn't have the resources to make maps? We found them. They were in a closet, out back, shoved away in a box. Someone, some intern stuck it there a couple years back, and we just kind of forgot about it. But hey, look, we've got map-making resources now. We're going to make a bunch of maps, put it in a map pack for you. Isn't that great? I mean, yeah, it's good. It would be better if the game didn't have to be falling off of a cliff before you just made the game like a normal studio would, presumably. But okay, this is why this statement annoys me so much. And there's a few other issues going through this video that are very similar in the way they've been executed on and for the reasons that they annoy me. Because they're capable. We know they're capable. This has happened literally like clockwork through the entire lifespan of Destiny, from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2. This happens over and over. And yet... And yet... Moving on from just maps, but sticking in the PvP space, let's play this little clip of what Joe had to say about how they're handling PvP. Uh, I want to talk one other effort we want to do here. Uh, we're going to bolster what we call a PvP strike team. Throughout Destiny development, we've built strike teams 
for efforts before. Um, I, this has probably been sort of invisible to you all in the audience, but in moments like in between uh, Curse of Osiris and Warmind, we built a strike team for Destiny Investment. This team was sort of built around, hey, how can we make it more rewarding and more enjoyable to just get stuff in Destiny 2? This team built stuff very quickly, like what would eventually become the master working system. They also went through, knocked out a whole bunch of bugs, knocked out a whole bunch of quality of life issues. We're gonna take the same effort and we're gonna build a PVP strike team around the same principle, but have focused on the Crucible. So we have the capability to create a quote unquote strike team for PVP to fix bugs, address community feedback, create new features, and overall, be the stewards of the full second half of the game. One half is PvE, one half is PvP. This is how Destiny has been from its inception. If we need to create a strike team to guide 50% of the game, who have you had working on that other 50% of the game up to this point? And seeing as how the implication is that there really wasn't a dedicated team working on 50% of the game, who thought that that was a decision that was a good idea? Again, very similar to the maps situation that they can just magically have the resources to say we're going to be able to create a map pack, which saying they're going to do something is something we'll talk about at the end of all this because that's a whole other issue. But why did you apparently not have the resources to have a team of people really working on PvP until the game was on fire? Like, actually. Until people across the gaming sphere were making videos and making articles mocking the state of the game, the actual article for the state of the game, as well as the state of the game itself. And suddenly you can just say, oh yeah, well, no, we're going to have a team of people working on it. Why didn't you have a team of people working on it in the first place? Is it because you're trying to not set expectations too high, not create patterns, not over-deliver? Minimum viable product? I don't know. I don't know. It's just... How do you not have a team working on one of the two major core aspects of the game? It's insane. Moving on, we're going to talk about armor. Joe goes into a little bit of discussion about the different types of armor that exist in the game. That makes sense. You know, you're going to have your fancier armor for your end game activities or, of course, for your paid stuff, yada, yada, yada. Maybe less fancy stuff that your average day-to-day -day character wears or the stuff that you wear as you're leveling up, whatever. Cool. But apparently... There was a shift in focus. Let's have Joe talk about that really quick. Now, what we failed to do when we reprioritized, hey, where are our resources going, is communicate this to you. So, so we knew that when we made this change, we were going to be able to make a ritual armor set every single year. And we thought, okay, well, that's fine. We have a lot that fits this sort of base guardian fantasy. But we should have communicated that out to you. And so, one, I'd like to say, but this is not a thing that we're never going to invest in. We're investing in it again in the final shape. There's going to be a whole other ritual suite of armor. Um, and, and we're excited to, get, to sort of replenish that base card in fantasy. But just because we're doing that in the final shape year, that doesn't mean that we communicated this soon enough. So the reason that Bungie didn't do what they said they were going to do in creating a new ritual armor set that would go into the vendor pool for your standard day-to-day -day core playlist activities, again, something we spoke about in my video on the State of the Game article, was because they decided to shift focus and not worry about making that armor that they said they were going to make, very explicitly stated they were going to make, so they could focus more of their resources and efforts on making the end game and paid stuff cooler. And they just never told anyone this. And that's why the vendor armor didn't happen. Even though for years, people were saying, hey, is there going to be like a follow-up on this statement that y'all made about there going to be a vendor armor refresh? Because like you said this was going to happen. Like you literally stated this is what we're doing and then never did it. Hello? And it is only now, after the game and the company are being absolutely roasted, raked over the coals, that suddenly the game director would be like, oh yeah, we just decided to change that internally and never communicated it. Okay. Why? Why would you not tell people this? And again, 
If this is something that you knew was happening, why is your statement in the State of the Game article that this video is a response to say that they just don't have the resources to do it, that it's not worth it? That seems to be a bit of a different statement than we decided we're not going to do it because we want to focus on other stuff. That's important context. When you've promised to do something and then decided to do something different, you need to state that. However, Joe has a response. So also for this year, we want to take an armor set that we were going to put in the Eververse and we're saying, no, 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 no. We should have communicated this earlier. It's really important that our fans can trust us. Let's take this armor set that we were going to use in season 22 for the Eververse set and let's say, no, it's going to be free and we're going to put it as a ritual rewards. So next season, before the end of the season, you should see a brand new armor set that you can earn through playing Strikes, Crucible, Gambit as like a ritual reward for doing this, a brand new armor look. Again, in the ongoing pattern of Destiny, there is a bunch of community outcry. There's a bunch of backlash to the way the game feels to play, the price of things, community interactions with the developers through the state of the game are not good, through social media are not good. How do we fix that? How do we actually follow through on a promise we made? Well, take a paid armor set out of the Eververse store, stick it in the game for people to earn. Okay. The issue is that this is something, again, that has happened before. In 2019, Bungie put out Shadowkeep, what was at the time the worst-reviewed mainline expansion in the history of Destiny. Not like the little DLCs like Curse of Osiris and Warmind were like, this is a full-blown expansion, and it was not very well received for a number of reasons that we're not going to get into here. But one of the things that they did to help bolster waning community sentiment prior to their next big expansion coming out, which is pretty much the timeline that we're on here, they said, oh, okay, you know, we haven't done right by you guys, we're sorry. We're going to take a paid armor set out of the Eververse, put it in this free dungeon we're releasing for you to go earn. Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? And they're playing literally the exact same card again. This is not them saying, okay, we're going to make sure that from now on we're following through on the promise that we made before. We're going to make a new armor set every year, yada, yada, yada. Or even we're going to focus less resources on putting stuff into the Eververse. Still going to put stuff in the Eververse, of course, but maybe a little bit less, a little bit will be pulled from that to put resources into, you know, the actual game. This is just a one-time thing to make people feel better. And then it's going to go right back to exactly what it's been that has caused all of the problems that we have led us to this point. It doesn't change anything. It's a band-aid to try and make sure that people buy into the final shape. It's just the same repeating pattern over and over again. Bungie pushes the envelope as far as they can. They start to see player interest and sentiment drop like a rock. They step back, say, oh, well, because we needed to make things better, we're going to magically pull resources out of our hats. We'll do things that the community has been asking for this entire time that really should just be baseline things in the game as a gift to you to show that we care, that we messed up, and we want to make things right. And then as soon as people start to feel better again, as soon as people get back onto the game, start recommending it to their friends, start buying things, it all goes downhill again. It is an abusive relationship, and I'm so, so tired of it. And I wanted to make this video because I'm concerned that people aren't seeing the pattern. They're rightfully so praising Joe for getting on camera, just having his like little notebook and essentially having a staff meeting with the overall Destiny community and the gaming press and media and community as a whole who have their eyes on Destiny right now and saying, look, these are the things that are wrong. These are the things we want to try to do to make it right. I'm going to, he's going to like stream and take questions from the community live, which is an incredibly bold move. And I hope it works out well for him because like that's a hell of a limelight to shine on yourself. I respect his efforts here. The problem is that we've literally heard it all before and nothing has changed. Literally from Joe himself. Something that you might remember from my State of the Game video was me absolutely lambasting Bungie for taking Gambit out back behind the shed and double tapping it, putting it down for good. 
when all they had to do was just actually support the mode. Much like all they have to do with PvP is actually support it, and they're apparently now doing that by giving it people to work on it, which is insane that a company as big as Bungie needs to be like, oh, we should put people on this game mode that people really like. like yeah? Gambit, less popular than PvP, pure Crucible, but still popular enough. They just said, well, nobody played it because we didn't do anything with it, but we're not going to talk about that, so we're just going to end it. Remember, Joe Blackburn himself, two years ago, in a Twitter discussion, similar to this one, it wasn't a video, it was just tweets, but still, talked about the fact that Bungie had this grand vision for how they were going to make Gambit better. They had plans and dreams of making more maps for the mode, putting more effort into it, revitalizing it. Then there was basically nothing until two years later when they said it's dead. There is a precedent for Bungie stating that they're going to do something and then never doing it. Getting people's hopes up so that they buy things and then once they have the money, never doing it. Because again, I guess that'd be over delivery. We have had a renewed focus on PvP, I don't even know, like six times now. And while those exact words were not stated here, the whole section of Joe being like, oh, you know, new sandbox balance and all the maps and oh, all these things we're doing certainly feels like a renewed focus on PvP. And if they keep having to have renewed focuses on PvP, promises are made and then very little happens. And that's why I'm so skeptical about this. And I wish more people were talking about that side of things beyond just praising Joe for getting up here and saying this stuff. So... That's pretty much what I have to say about this. We are going to be watching the Final Shape Reveal Showcase on the 22nd. People in my Discord asked if we were going to be watching it, and we will be. I have maintained if Final Shape is actually good. Maybe a couple weeks after it comes out, I'll see what the community has to say about it. Maybe I'll get it and play it as kind of a send-off to Destiny. Because it is something that I've spent so much time with and have enjoyed so much. However, something I implore you all to keep in mind is that Destiny's marketing team is very, very good. They're going to make the final shape look super cool and big and epic and this incredible send-off to this entire journey that we've gone on with Destiny and that everyone needs to get it. The time, the words, there's never been a better time to get back into Destiny are almost certainly going to be said because that is something that is said in literally every one of these showcases. Don't fall for the hype. Don't fall for it. There's been too much bad precedent set and too much bad blood with Bungie and the community and the state of the game over the last long time to fall for that trick now. We'll check out the showcase. We'll discuss it. Then we'll see what it actually is once it comes out. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know this has been a topic that has been discussed a lot. I know I'm a little bit behind the curve on this one, but I wanted to really get my thoughts together and see what the overall sentiment from other content creators, much bigger ones than I, as well as the Destiny community at large was. But I wanted to see if other people were going to talk about what I wanted to talk about here. And again, I really haven't seen much of it. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it interesting. Strike up some conversations in the comments below. My name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.